the military police roll up Jeremy Clarkson's farm on a yoga mat to wake up at the bottom of the cliff in an Italian vineyard in the Mojave Desert in California. And one and a half weeks later, thousand year old church in Germany, a car on an airplane. When four huge Eastern European guys are telling you to move along, you move along. I looked over, president of the country, giving the thumbs up. Morning guys, on today's video, I'm gonna take you through the top 10 places that I have camped so far on my trip around the world, living in the back of my, where it is, there it is, Lamborghini Urus turn camper. From car lifts to international cool sites and monuments, we're gonna go over it in today's video. If you're not sure who I am, my name's Connor, and last year I got rid of all my material possessions, sold my house, said goodbye to my family and friends, bought this Lamborghini Urus, shipped it to Europe, and I've been driving around. I'm currently 17 countries in, right now I'm in Scotland, and yeah, let's get started with the stories. Before we can get into this video, I need you to do me a favor. I'm stuck here on this train track. A train could come by at any second unless you hit the like and the subscribe button down below. It's free for you and it really helps me out so I can get off this track because a train could come any second. Thanks. So it all started out with me sitting there on the floor of my living room on a yoga mat, <laughs> literally because I had gotten rid of all of my material possessions and was about to move out of my house when I bought this here Lamborghini on an auction site, sight unseen. The most epic part of the journey was actually the start itself. I started out camping in the back of this in the Mojave Desert in California, and one and a half weeks later, I was camping in the back of it in front of a thousand-year-old church in Bamberg, Germany, because I was able to put the car on an airplane at LAX airport, which was so epic. Videos on the channel as well, if you look down below. And literally camped in Germany, like 5,000 miles some odd away in a week and a half's time. Absolutely crazy. And the next morning, as I packed everything up in the back of the car, the cops rolled up to tell me I could not park there in front of the church. <laughs> I definitely didn't tell them that I had camped there the night before, but they didn't ask. Romania was wild. I first started by camping out, or attempting to camp out, in front of Andrew Tate's house. I started by cooking steaks out in front of his house, got the bed ready, started brushing my teeth, and then four very large Eastern European security guards came up and politely suggested that I move along. And let me tell you, when four huge Eastern European guys are telling you to move along, you move along. The next experience I had was in the Black Hills, and that was absolutely epic. I found just this cool spot in the middle of the mountains to camp. I thought it was just public land. Turns out the next morning, I had three Romanian guys coming at me with their tractor, and they're running over with Romanian brandy and chocolates and just ready to be friends. They were so cool, and here I was, camping and trespassing on their property, and they're inviting me in for food, shower, bathroom, anything I need, no problem. They were so cool, we did a podcast with them. It's down on the channel in the podcast section. The next experience was probably the most earthy, wild experience that I had, and that was in Transalpina, where I camped literally in the middle of the thick mountains, where I was next to this beautiful stream and had this big bonfire where I cooked all the steak and food and dinner on. It just was really earthy, back to nature, and just camping as you would wish it, the way you see it in a magazine. The most epic experience, however, was at the top of Trans Shan, which Jeremy Clarkson calls the most beautiful road in the world and there were 90 to 100 mile an hour winds blowing against the side of my car. I thought I was gonna wake up down at the bottom of the cliff with the car rolling down the cliff. But fortunately, when I woke up the next morning, the car was still where I parked it the night before. Cops. Definitely had my fair share of cops knocking on the window when I'm sleeping at night. Probably the biggest and most experiential one was in Budapest, Hungary where I camped with the car in the downtown Hero Monument Square, just off to the side of it, for the record. And the cop came by at about 4 a.m. in the morning, freaking out, and saw it as a huge sign of disrespect. I in no way, shape, or form meant any disrespect by it, but he certainly thought so. Another time with the cops was in Germany, in Sensheim, where I had camped out on the side of the road, 
had just finished rolling up and packing up my things and was eating breakfast when these two cops rolled up and seemed very dissatisfied at the fact that I had no front license plate on my American car. Another experience I had with the cops was actually here in England, just outside of Southampton last week, when I had camped in between two towns on an old country road, and I had just fallen asleep, perhaps 10 minutes prior to the knock by the cops, but they just wanted to check on me and see if everything was okay, see the car seemed strange, I didn't have a front plate, I've got an American tag, you know, they get a lot of stolen vehicles here in the UK, so they just wanted to check on me. So I appreciate that. Lamborghini dealerships. I've definitely camped outside of my fair share of Lamborghini dealerships around the world. The first was in Vienna, Austria. My car had actually broken down in Hungary, and I had to have it towed three hours to Vienna, which was the worst experience ever, because I was in the back of this tow truck while these guys were just smoking on their cigarettes the entire drive listening to the worst Hungarian music. But the next day, Lamborghini Vienna got me in there. They had all their techs attacking the car and got it fixed up, no time fast. It turns out it was just a little O-ring that had ruptured. It was a fun party at Lamborghini Vienna and I got on my way. The next experience camping at a Lamborghini dealership was actually in Munich, at Lamborghini Munich. I was on my way to the Nürburgring to race with Misha Chardon, and I wanted to stop in and have the car checked out in advance to make sure everything was safe. And I camped outside their dealership the night before, got it in the next morning, and was on my way. But perhaps the coolest and most epic camping experience at a Lamborghini dealership so far was Lamborghini Pangborn in England where they cleared all of the cars out in front of the dealership, out of the way. I pulled out my awning, my stove, table, chairs, and barbecued a nice steak right out front of the Lamborghini dealership. And they even helped me out with a shower and an oil change while I was there. When you need to upload a video and take a nap, McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. Camping in Italy was cool. I actually got to camp in an Italian vineyard for a few days where I rewired all of the lights and the battery for the car. And then I made my way down to Rome where I camped outside the Colosseum. I got to camp outside the Ferrari factory in Marinello. And of course, the Lamborghini factory museum worldwide headquarters in Bologna where I took the factory tour it's a good thing you guys subscribed because otherwise I would have been smashed by that train over there. I also got to camp on the beach in Italy where I had the military police roll up. Not sure if they thought I was invading the country or what, but they ended up becoming friends and following along on the channel. San Marino, one of the smallest countries in the world and the smallest country that I have camped in so far. I just pulled over on the side of the road in the mountains of San Marino and the next morning on the drive out of town there was this whole security detail and I looked over and next thing I knew the president of the country was looking at me giving the thumbs up of the rig. The Alps were cool. I got to camp out and barbecue in St. Moritz, Switzerland. Almost killed myself sliding down a cliff in the Swiss Alps and I even got to camp in a parking garage in Austria. So I've definitely camped in my fair share of car shops around the world. The first was in Romania where we were drilling all the holes in the roof to run the electrical and install the roof rack. We had the ceiling taken apart of the car, the headliner, and there wasn't really a way to camp inside the car. So I stayed at my buddy's shop. We were working on the car 18 hours a day anyway. I put a tarp on the ground, rolled out my yoga mat, and slept as the mice were running around all night long and the bugs actually camped in a bug net. That was definitely quite an experience. I also got to camp up at Vulcan Alpha, Misha Chardin's garage and shop near the Nürburgring in Germany. They were super cool. That was an awesome experience. And I also camped for about a month in Stuttgart, Germany at Benjamin's shop, the king of the G-Wagons. And that was super cool. He helped me out with a lot of mods on the vehicle. So those nights were some different. Sometimes I was in the bed of the car. Sometimes I was on the floor of the shop. Sometimes we had the whole car taken apart and I was sleeping inside the car on top of like the batteries and the wires and stuff. Sometimes even up on the car lift where we were working on things under the car. In England, I camped on the edge of Jeremy Clarkson's farm field. 
and in the morning his manager came by to check and see if I was okay. And that about sums up my experience with English people in England. Here I was, possibly maybe trespassing on the edge of their farm field, and here she was coming by to make sure that I was okay with the nicest attitude rolling up. Everywhere I went in England, people had this same attitude. I started telling her about the car and the journey and the trip around the world, and she had zero interest in it because by the time I was two words in, she was already driving off and on with her day. The first time I'd ever been requested to camp somewhere was by Chiro at the Petrol Hedonism Club Underground Car Show. I loved the idea so much that I drove across five countries, including under the sea for the Channel Tunnel, to get to England and go to London for the Wembley Car Show, where I camped here in the back of the car in the car show. I thought that was so cool. And one night at about 12.30 at night, some guys rolled up in a Lamborghini Sien, and they were walking around the car taking pictures of it. And just as they were about to walk off, I opened up the door and said, what's up lads, cheerio. They thought it was the funniest thing they had ever seen, someone camping inside a Lamborghini at a car show. They turned out to be really cool lads. And the car show was an absolutely amazing experience from cooking pancakes outside of my little popped out awning with Benedict Fowler and doing his podcast, all the way till washing all the pans in the kitchen where I popped out of the door. And sure enough, there was Mark McCann and Otto Alex and their families. And here I was with my handful of clean, all clad pans. And that was the first time I had met them. They turned out to be really cool. And Mark even stopped by to say hi and check out the rig.